All right, so I just want to give a quick walkthrough of the, uh, the GUI um, on the Radian Stabilizer software. So in the diagnostics window, we've got SLU, Mode, Servo Out, and AUX. Um, SLU indicates what's happening with your SLU channel. Uh, right now, you can, see we, you can see the bar moving, but it's red, so we're not actually outputting a SLU command. When that bar goes green, when we go into the SLU mode on the mode switch, you can see that it's now outputting a green, so that's, it's actually sending a, a servo pulse to the motor drive and uh, driving a slew command. So the next thing I want to go over is the mode switch. This is uh, intended to be set up as a three position switch when the, the, green, the green bar indicates uh, the setting. So over red is off or kill as I call it. Uh, the orange brownish color is fixed position stabilized and then the green is slew which is a combination of stabilization plus slewing commands. Um, so the servo out is the drive to the servo. You can see that change as we move the radian. So that's, that's sending, a, sending a signal from the radian to the servo on how to stabilize, essentially. Um, one thing you can check if you're setting these up modules all up on the bench before, just, just check that you've got the proper settings as far as the default pan, tilt, and roll. Just take and rotate the module in the orientation that it will be used for the axes you're setting it, and you can see the current angle changing. And that should correlate to the the way you're going to install the radian so for instance if you had one set up as pan and you rotated it you would want to see that current angle uh, field changing as you rotated it um, the other things we've got to go over the the input channels slew mode and aux um, basically you can use the input monitor and you'll be able to see all your channels uh, this is if if you're using s bus ppm or spectrum so this input channel monitor will show you everything that the radian, the, the pan radian is picking up from that first uh, module in the area, your first receiver, and then passing on to all the other radian modules. And you can see, you know, as I move the transmitter around, you can see all these various channels. And then you can map, um, you can select these channels to control SLU, mode, and aux. And we've got suggested settings in the manual, how we set it up. You're free to set it up, however makes sense for you. Um, the next setting is servo pulse rate. If you're using free fly servos, uh, stick with 400. Uh, the pulse width of the servo, 1520 or 760, 99% uh, of the servos that you would be considering using for camera mount stabilization are 1520, so stick with that in most cases unless you are very certain that you are using a narrow pulse width servo. Then we have gain, slew rate, angle trim. Gain is the, the main adjustment parameter for this system. Uh, slew rate, this, this defines what your max slew rate will be at 100% um, demand on your transmitter. So right now, if you have 100% ATV and I go full pan, we'll get a 60 degree per second pan. Angle trim, this allows you to compensate for any deficiencies in mounting. For instance, if you, if you accidentally get the radian a little bit crooked on roll axis and you notice your roll axis, because it's mounted crooked, is off a degree or two, you can come into this angle demand and adjust that to compensate so you get a nice level horizon even though you know just to, just to save you the hassle of having to remount it and very very accurately remount it dead band um, this is adjustable and it basically just adjusts how much dead band you have in your stick before uh, things start to happen so it's good uh, you know if you have a higher precision transmitter you can lower the dead band down a little bit but uh, it's adjustable and allows you to Make sure you have a nice uh, wide dead bend in the middle so you're not giving commands that were not intended. Um, the current angle and the demand, this is useful to check your installation of the radian and make sure that uh, things are happening the way that you think they should. Like I mentioned earlier about rotating the pan axis and checking to see if the current angle is moving when you do that. It saved me a lot of times when I've accidentally written the wrong default configurations for different modules. And then you'll move it and you'll realize that the angle isn't moving any, anything like the way it should. Um, the read and write, this is uh, it's important to read uh, when you connect to a module so you don't accidentally overwrite it. Um, with, uh, with other modules configurations, it can be very frustrating after you've already tuned the other ones up. So we put, a, uh, we put a safety thing in here where if you go to write, this thing pops up and says, you know, confirm that you do indeed want to write. Um, you can disable this by clicking the disable confirm once you're kind of more experienced with the software, uh, just to save some time. The only other option really in here is just this, uh, the Spectrum DSM, DSM to 1024. So it automatically detects if you're using Spectrum, PPM, or SBUS over here. This, these checkboxes, they're not actually selectable, but uh, depending on which system you're using, a check mark will appear there. But if you are using the DSM to 1024, you'll need to select this setting to tell the Radian software to use that algorithm for uh, 
the inputs. Um, and I think that gives you a pretty good overview of how the software works. It's pretty simple. Um, there's a few other windows like comms link. Um, this is where you select the COM port that, the, uh, that you'll use to communicate with the USB to serial programmer. Um, but I think that'll get you going.